grace and peace and good morning and God bless you. Welcome to Fire in the Morning. Amen. We are getting started here. Amen. And just coming into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We were having a little bit of difficulty this morning. It seems like uh, started a whole uh, broadcast and it stopped and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> but praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are ready. Amen to get into the word of God on this morning. I pray that you all are rejoicing because guess what? Today is Friday. You made it. Glory to God. It is the last work day for some of you. And I know that some of you have had a hard week. I know for our children who are just going back to school this week. I know they are glad to see Friday. Hallelujah. And so we give God praise. We give him glory. And we give him honor on today. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going back to the word of God. We are finishing up. Amen. Well, we won't finish up today. But praise God. We are concentrating on the fruit of the spirit on today. Amen. And today, praise the Lord. We are looking at gentleness and goodness. Hallelujah. We are revealing on today what is gentleness and goodness. Amen. According to the scripture. And and so we want to look at God's word and see what the word of God is speaking to us concerning these things. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we know that God's word is going to reveal, amen, some things for us, amen, that we didn't even realize. I know even as I studied, amen, looking at these words, praise God, learning the difference between the two, praise the Lord, amen. I tell you, it's just, it's a blessing to read the word. It's a blessing to study the word of God. It's one thing to read it. It's something altogether different to study the word of God. And I pray that you have been being blessed and encouraged. Amen. We have been digging into the fruit of the spirit because we need to put emphasis. Amen. On Christian character. Hallelujah. Amen. And us walking in the things of God. And God, amen, manifesting himself through us. And us not just, praise God, being anointed. Us not being able to just speak in tongues and lay hands on the sick. And, you know, all of those gifts that we walk in. And we thank God for the gifts, praise God. But we have been too gift-oriented, amen. And we have not caused people to look at their character, Praise God. They have been unstable. We have people who are just all over the place, but they can prophesy circles around you. You know, they can see through muddy water. Hallelujah. But they don't pay their bills. Praise the Lord. So we want to be able to look at the fruit of the spirit and we want to develop godly character as believers so that, amen, we're not just gifted. Amen. But we have fruit. Amen. We have the fruit of godly character, the fruit, amen, of righteousness flowing through us as believers. Praise the Lord. So I'm excited about what we have been studying. Amen. And how, amen, the Lord has been revealing himself through the word of the Lord on this week. Praise God. And so we're going back to the scripture on this morning. Amen. And we are going to continue digging into the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's get our Bibles. Praise God. And we're going back to Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Still in verse 22. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the verses that we are, the first part of the verses, what we are focusing on this morning. And it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Amen. And so this week we have already covered love, joy, peace, and long suffering. And today, praise God, we're going to look at goodness. Amen. Gentleness and goodness. Praise God. All right. So let's look at this first word gentleness. Okay. And, um, I want to point out first that this word gentleness, amen. If you look at some of the other translations, it says kindness and not gentleness. Okay. And that's because these two words are interchangeable. 
All right. And so looking at this word, uh, we need to be able to understand, amen, that we need to take every opportunity that we uh, that we absolutely can, amen, to extend kindness, all right, or, or gentleness toward other people. Praise God. Because that is the will of God. That is the will of God. So this word gentleness is the Greek word krestotes, which means goodness, kindness, or gentleness. This this is the word that describes kindness shown toward others through deeds of kindness. You know, doing kind things toward other people. Amen. And so uh, when you look at this word, you can't separate it from, you can't separate goodness from kindness because those two words are, it's one and the same. When we look at um, Psalm 145 and 9, it says, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. The love of God is expressed through His kindness, even to those that reject Him. And this is what the Scripture is showing us here, that the, that the Lord is good to all. Amen. Is showing His kindness to every single individual, even those who do evil. You know what I'm saying? Even those who are wicked, He is still kind. He is still gentle to them. The kindness of the Lord, amen, is seen how he is seen in how he deals with his people, is seen how he deals with those who are sinners. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when we get to uh the word goodness, we're gonna get into that in a minute. But I want to uh finish looking at this this word. Let me finish giving you the definition of this Christodes. It means kindness. Um it is philanthropy forbearance and and it is the opposite of apotomia which is severity or cutting something short and quickly Christotis is translated as good as kindness gentleness it is the grace which pervades the whole nature mellowing all which would have been harsh or an arst austere so it mellow it's a mellowing out it is what makes soft in your um in your presentation it's not harsh it's not rough it's not gruff amen even if you deserve it amen gentleness or kindness amen like like we just read is philanthropy it's doing good it is doing good deeds and we're going to explain even how those good deeds are are not just you know just because somebody is out in the world and they are a philanthropist does not mean that they are actually having the fruit of the Spirit. All right, and we're going to do the contrast between those two. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, let me see. It says, Thus wine is Christos, mellowed with age. Christ's yoke is Christos, as having nothing harsh or galling about it. Contrast agathostune, which is a word we're going to talk about today. It pertains to character without the necessary altruistic externalization found. There's another word here. Can't even pronounce this word. Agatha Sune. Okay, so it's two words that they're contrasting here. Active benignity. Crestotis has only the harmlessness of the dove, not the wisdom of the serpent. Okay, so... We, we see that this word, amen, is pertaining to being kind. When you start talking about being kind, a person who is kind is concerned about the needs of others, okay? And the world, when the world looks at people, when the world even looks at believers, that, you know, this is something that is valued by the world, being kind. The world always describes, uh, uh, you know, this word always describes, you know, kindnesses. That is shown to up th to others through the uh, deeds that we do. We talked about philanthropy, doing good works toward other people. You know what I'm saying? And and so when you look at this word, it, it is pertaining to you who are a believer, looking at the needs of others, amen, and extending yourself to do good deeds toward them. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when you see a person that is in need, amen, you show them kindness. Amen. You are concerned about their needs. Praise God. You look out after them. And so the difference when you look at this word kindness and, and, and 
uh, an act of kindness by somebody who's in the world versus, you know, this being the fruit of the spirit, a person who does kindness in the natural, you know what I'm saying? They're looking to be appreciated for the work that they do. But the fruit of the spirit is not looking for appreciation. The fruit of the spirit is just the outflow of the spirit of God. It is what flows out of the believer. Even if you never say thank you, even if you never come back and show any appreciation, praise God, natural kindness seeks to be honored by the world. The fruit of the Spirit is not seeking honor. The fruit of the Spirit, amen, just flows. Hallelujah. Natural kindness is glorified, you know, or glorifies human nature. It looks to glorify all or make the human being, you know what I'm saying, uh, put the human person who does the act on, on the spot, you know, and put them in the spotlight. Amen. But when you start talking about, amen, kindness that comes from the fruit of the Spirit, it is Jesus who gets the glory. It is Jesus who is put in the spotlight. It is Jesus, amen, who is being uplifted. Amen. And lifted up. Amen. And put uh, in the spot. And we understand that we only do these things because of Christ that is in us. Amen. And so the kindness or gentleness that we're speaking of. Amen. This is the fruit of the spirit and it's not like the world does. You know what I'm saying? So you're not looking for accolades. You're not, you know, if you, so if you do stuff and you want somebody to praise you, you do something nice for somebody. Amen. And you're looking for a pat on the back. Guess what? That's not the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Operating in you. That is just, that's just, you know, you showing, doing an act of kindness. That's not the fruit of the spirit. We always want to seek to give God glory and give God honor in all that we do. Okay. And so, so when we talk about this word gentleness or kindness, it is to, it is to provide for others, you know, without seeking a benefit for ourselves. We're not looking to see what we get out of the deal. It's not quid pro quo, as they say in the legal uh, community. It's not something for something. Praise God. You're not looking, amen, to, to, to benefit yourself or put yourself in a, in a good light. This is about God getting the glory. This is about the Spirit of God flowing through us, amen, and us making sure that whatever that need is of that individual, that God gets the glory for us meeting that need, amen. We're not trying to get praise, honor, and glory directly or indirectly. It's about God getting the glory. Okay, and that is how we exemplify the love of God. That is how we exemplify Christ through us. Isn't it terrible how, you know, you know, that's the worst thing in the world is for somebody to do something kind for another person, especially a believer. And then they go and boast and brag about it. You know, and you ever notice that people get into arguments, they always want to bring up, well, I did such and such and such for you. Well, then now we know that it was not an act from the fruit of the spirit that what you did, you did it out of your flesh. Amen. And because you were not glorified for it, you didn't get no praise and honor for it. Now you're bringing it up yet again. So we understand that those things, that's the difference between us operating in the spirit and us operating in our flesh. We even see how the Lord has shown his kindness toward us. Amen. Even when we were unrighteous. We look at the book of Romans chapter 5. Amen. Verses 7 8. It says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Isn't that something? That was the gentleness and the kindness of the Lord toward us. Kindness is also undeserving. We, we, we received kindness from God that we did not deserve. Titus chapter 2 shows us that. It says after, this is verses 4 and 5, it says, but after that the kindness and love of, of God our Savior toward man appeared. Amen. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So listen, it is not that we deserved it. Even and so these are the things that are are the markers 
for us even as believers showing kindness or being gentle toward other people. Number one, you don't do something because somebody deserves it. Number two, you don't do it because, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they're good people. I should do this for them because they're a good person, you know, and, and this would be a good show for them. No, this is just like we didn't deserve it. Just like, amen, we were unrighteous and God was kind toward us. That is the way that kindness, amen, is exemplified even through us by the spirit of God. Amen. Kindness loves those, amen, who have done nothing to deserve it. Amen. When you look at Ephesians chapter 4, you see, amen, verse 32, it says, And be kind one to another, or gentle toward one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. It is gentleness and kindness that causes us to walk in forgiveness toward each other. When we are not willing to let go of, of wrongs that people have done to us when we want to keep an account of all the things that they have done all the sins that they have committed against us all of the things that we feel that they have done praise god that have been wrong amen you know how you do when you feel like somebody wronged you and you keep an account of it no when you feel like you know what i'm saying somebody somebody has done you wrong and you're gonna you're not gonna forgive them you're gonna hold a grudge that's not kindness that's not gentleness Gentleness is always ready to forgive. Amen. It is the same kindness that the Lord shows towards sinners. It's the same kindness that he showed toward us while we were sinners. Kindness is not brooding over somebody when they do something wrong. You're not, mm, child, mm. You know how we do. You know how we do. Somebody does something wrong. We're like, mm, you heard such and such and such. Mm -hmm, yeah, child. That's how we do in our flesh. But in the spirit, that's not kindness. Amen. Kind people do not hold grudges. Kind people don't rejoice over somebody's wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. Kindness is always going to love those who have been unkind toward them. Or un if, if, if somebody has been unkind toward us, they have not been gentle toward us. Amen. Hallelujah. They have been hostile and they've been rude. Amen. And remember, praise God, as I was reading, you know, in, in the lexicon and sharing this definition with you, amen. It is the gentleness of the dove without, I want to say, I want to make sure I say this right. It's the gentleness of the dove and not the wisdom of the serpent. There is no, there is no cunning in this kindness. This is not the kind of, of, of kindness that, that, you know, seeks opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You know, when we when the scripture says be harmless as a dove and wise be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay. So there's there's a there's a I want to use the right word. There's a cunning that we're supposed to have, even as believers. You know what I'm saying? We need to be sharp on things of the world. You know what I'm saying? Understanding stuff. Praise God. Amen. But this kind of kindness, amen, is not trying to figure things out. This is the kindness that you receive and that you show because it is the outflow of the spirit of God. It's not looking for nothing back. It's not seeking for no opportunity. It's not looking for, amen, glorification. It just, this is the, the spirit that just wants to glorify God. Hallelujah. That God alone will be magnified and honored. Hallelujah. That's what this is about. Amen. And and that, that leads me to my next point, which means, amen, that, you know, it's the character of this gentleness and the character of this kindness. Amen. Hallelujah. Is being generous without any self-interest. You're not trying to be an opportunist. And I'm going to tell you something. Let's talk about that spirit, that spirit of the opportunist. Amen. That does stuff just to be seen. Amen. Or you do something toward, you know, for people only if there's something in it for you. That's not the spirit of God. That's not the spirit of kindness. Praise God. Amen. This kindness is not seeking anything in return. Hallelujah. This is the life that a disciple of Christ is, is, is called to live. Your life should be one. Amen. That is generous toward others. Whether or not they hostile toward you. Praise God. 
You know what I'm saying? This is the stuff that causes our our hearts to be bound together, amen, as a body. Whether or not you've been treated with hostility and rudeness, amen, and harshness, amen. Even in our family relationships, sometimes you might experience a little hostility in your family relationships, praise God. And the way that you respond, your friendships, the way that you respond, you know what I'm saying? You might have knocked down drag outs with a friend. You know what I'm saying? There's no place for hostility when you start talking about gentleness and kindness. Even if there's a break in a relationship, there should still be somebody should be able to have, you know what I'm saying? You know, the world calls it being amicable. You know what I'm saying? But no, we want kindness. It's love. It's an expression, amen, of love. Amen. And you're not seeking anything in return. Amen. That's what we said. It's not quid pro quo. Remember, you're not doing something for something. Amen. It's no advantage for you. You're not gaining any advantage. The only advantage, the only reward that you even looking for is your eternal reward. You know that God, hallelujah, is going to take care of you. Luke chapter 6 verses 32 through 36 says, for if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also even do the same. And if you lend to them of whom you have hoped to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much gain. But you love you, but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing in return. Now you know that's a difficulty. I'm gonna stop right there just for a second. Ooh! You you mean tell me you want me to lend them my money? Then that's not a loan, God. You tell me to just give it to them, Jesus. Pretty much that's what he's saying. They asking for a loan, but you giving a gift. Without looking for anything in return. That's what he says. He says, do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be you therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Let me tell you something. We got a long way to go in Christendom. We got a long way to go in our character. Hallelujah. Amen. For us to pull up. Amen. And really look like Jesus. And, and really, this is real kindness. Now, you know it. Come on, tell the truth. Look at your own self. Let, let somebody come to you and they borrow money from you. Borrow a book from you. Borrow, you know, maybe your sister, your cousin. Somebody borrow your dress. Borrow your shoes. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. We The clock starts the moment that the exchange is made. And for some people, the clock starts the moment that they ask. The moment that you say, yes, I'm going to loan you X, Y, Z. I'm going to give you, you know what I'm saying, such and such and such. But I need this back by this particular date. We put a time frame on it. And, and, and we have broken friendships. We have broken family relationships because we don't know how to show kindness. Because somebody, we will loan them something and we don't get it back. And when we don't get it back, we go off. Look at what Jesus is saying. Kindness does not seek anything in return because your reward is in heaven. Can you wait for God to pay you back? Can you, can you wait for God, amen, to give you your reward? Are you, are you, amen, patient enough to allow God to be the one who rewards you for what you do for others? That's serious business. That's why I said we need to get our eyes off the off of being gifted. Hallelujah. And let's start looking at the fruit of the spirit. Let's start looking. Hallelujah. Amen. On how to grow up in Jesus and let the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Flow through us because it's a sad reflection on the body of Christ that we as believers are far less generous, far less gentle, far less kind than the world. The world does it for a fair show in the flesh. But my God, there's at least they doing it. We got to do better. A person that is filled with the Holy Spirit and that's overflowing, amen, with the, with the Spirit of God should be able to be generous. The spirit of generosity, the spirit of, of gentleness, the spirit of kindness should rest on them. 
Hallelujah. And we should be willing to meet the needs of other people, especially those that are in the body of Christ. The scripture tells us, amen, that we should always seek to do good for those, amen, for uh, when we have it, especially for those that are in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We got to learn how to be concerned about the needs of those that are around us and not just, amen, um, those that are presented by somebody else. Can I tell you something? That is one of the biggest problems that we have. We are so concerned with ourselves and not concerned with the needs of others. That's how come people, when they come to church, they can't connect because we're stuck in our own world. We're stuck in our own ways. We're stuck in me, 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 ah, 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 my, 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 my. We got all that on our mind. We can't learn to look outside ourselves. And you know, that's one of the things that even as when my children were growing up, I would make them do things and give to others and do for others because that was something that I always said to them. I said, y'all need to learn how to look outside of yourselves. Being able to do for others helps you to get your eyes off of you and get your eyes on the needs of somebody else. Amen. We got to learn how to do that even as adults and even as believers especially. Learn how to look outside yourself. We need this gentleness. We need this kindness. Amen. Because if we have the kindness, amen, as the fruit of the spirit, it's going to make us like Jesus in, in that we love those who don't deserve it. Amen. It's going to cause us to be compassionate and willing to forgive. Amen. The, the kindness of the Lord is full of compassion and it is always forgiving. That's what we want. That's how we want to portray ourselves. That's what, that's the life, the lifestyle that we want to live. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to always love those who are unkind to you. It's going to always love those who are hostile and rude. Amen. The hostility of people towards us should be met by the beauty of Jesus that lives on the inside of us. Do you have something beautiful of, that, that, that flows out of you from the presence of God? That's what you should have. Amen. It should be characterized by generosity and the absence of self-interest. You should not just be set, you know, self-centered. Me, me, I, I, my, my. Those should not be in your vocabulary on a regular basis. You as a believer, we as believers, we are called, amen, not just to preach the gospel, not just, amen, praise the Lord, for us to go and heal the sick and raise the dead, amen, but we are called to live a life of generosity that is beyond whatever the world expects of us. You know what I'm saying? The world gives to the poor. The world, amen, sends money to, to foreign countries in times of tragedy and need. The world, amen, goes and helps and digs wells. Amen. But what can we do beyond that? Amen. Gentleness. This is a fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I want to move quickly, amen, to the fruit of the Spirit. Goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Because goodness is... And gentleness are contrasts against one another. All right. This is when we start talking about goodness. It is the goodness of God that reveals his nature and his character. So when we start talking about gentleness and kindness. It is us learning how to live outside of ourselves. It is learning how to show kindness toward those who don't deserve it. Amen. But when you start talk about, talking about goodness and it's mentioned in the definition. Amen. When I, when I was reading this to you, it is. Goodness is, is somewhat the opposite of gentleness in the sense that goodness is from that Greek word, agathostune. It is good in character and beneficial in its outworking, but it has a different emphasis than the fruit of kindness. Goodness is not always gentle because the primary concern for goodness is with that which is good. All right. And I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, kindness is gentle because the emphasis is on being kind, but goodness is the opposite of evil. That word evil is the Greek word kekos. Okay, so we as believers, we should follow that which is good in character or that which is the opposite of evil in character and that which is beneficial to others. Third John chapter one, verse 11 says, beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that does good is of God, but he that does evil, it has not seen God. So the difference between kindness, which is that chrysotes and goodness, which is agastune. Kindness is not 
does not involve righteous indignation. Okay? It's tenderhearted and compassionate toward those who seek help. That's what kindness does. But goodness can appear harsh it, because it always seeks to reveal the nature of God. Okay? And the character of God. And sometimes, even though somebody went with good to those who don't deserve it, amen, but goodness will make you tell the truth about issues. Goodness will make you, amen, reveal, amen, and uncover sin because goodness is, is the opposite, amen, of, of evil. You cannot... You cannot rejoice over evil, amen, and, and walk in the goodness of the Lord, okay? So it reveals the character of God. It reveals the nature of God. When we look at Exodus chapter 33 and verse 19, and it says, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Amen. God is good and his goodness is good in character and is beneficial to others. Okay. Satan is evil and he always seeks to steal, always seeks to kill, always seeks to destroy. Okay. All right. And so who we serve, deserve, it determines our character. Amen. So sometimes we can speak the truth. Now, remember I told you goodness will, will cause you to uncover sin. But sometimes we can speak the truth, but we're not being kind. Sometimes we could be so concerned about being kind that we never tell people what they need to hear. Okay? Kindness is one thing. I want to help you. I love you. I want to be there for you. I want to do things to, 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 to be good toward, to, to be kind toward you. You know what I'm saying? To help you out. But goodness says if there is sin present, I got to reveal it. Come on here, somebody. Goodness says that I don't condone your wrongdoing. Listen to me. That means it is the absence of compromise. Now, this is something that we need to deal with as believers because you cannot say that you love God and you condone sin. You cannot say you love God, amen, hallelujah, and you, amen, go along when you know that, you know what I'm saying, you got believers that help pay for their children abortions. Hello? That's evil. That's not goodness. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you have believers, amen, that condone the sin of others because they say, well, you know, we just got to be kind to them. We got to, you know, we got to look out for them. They just need help, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can help people, but you got to, you cannot compromise. Goodness is the absence of compromise. Hallelujah. Amen. We see the goodness of God when we look at the cross. Amen. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God reveals, you know, or we look at the cross, that reveals God's love toward us as sinners. Amen. But the cross also reveals the wrath of God towards sin. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. The cross, amen, Jesus dying on the cross was twofold. Number one, it was because of his love for us as, as unbelievers. He wanted us to be believers. But then again, it was him taking on the wrath of God because of our sin. He stood in our place, amen, and he took on the wrath of God. That was goodness, hallelujah, amen. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, we talk about God being good, and we talk about the goodness of the Lord leading us to repentance. You know, we live in a world where people don't know how to separate, you know, how then, you know, if God is love and if God is such a good God, how come he would send people to hell? How come a good God and a loving God would send people to die and, 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 and you know, go to hell forever and ever and ever? You have to understand that when you talk about God, amen, and his goodness, he, it is also associated with his severity. You cannot separate the goodness from God from the severity of God. Hallelujah. So this is where, this is where there's a sharp contrast between that gentleness or kindness, amen, and goodness. Now, see, you know, when we say goodness, you just start thinking about, well, maybe that means I'm a good person. No, it is talking about the goodness of God it is the absence of compromise. It is the absence of going along with sin. It is the absence, amen, or the opposite 
of evil. And because of the severity of God, Romans 11 and 22 says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his what? Goodness. Otherwise, you shall be cut off. Listen here. There's no compromise in the word of God. This is why we got to line our lives up. This is why we got to stop playing church. God's word, man, this thing is tight. That's why the Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life. We think we can do all this extra, extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? And say that we belong to God. Look at here. When you start studying the scripture and stop just reading it, when you rightly divide it, then you start seeing, oh my God, there's a lot that we got to come up in. God is not playing with us. Amen. And and don't think that just because you did not study that you get away with it. No, boo-boo, you don't get away with it. You are supposed to, amen, take the time to study the word, to see what God is saying to you. See what he has spoken to every last one of us. So the answer, how is it that God can c- condemn sinners to hell for eternity? Amen. You got to understand his severity, but then you got to also understand that it is the goodness of God that reveals his nature and his character. God God don't play. <laughs> he cannot deny himself. His love cannot oppose his holiness. God cannot allow sin to go unpunished. The cross reveals the love of God in that he took up our sin on itself so that we could be forgiven. There is no other way of salvation except through Jesus Christ. None. I don't care what anybody else says. We, we, we see that in John 3 16. Hallelujah. So you got to be able to, to, to rightly divide this. There is no compromise in us walking in the goodness of God. It, it is us having to face the reality. Amen. That God does not love evil and, and God does not condone evil and neither should we. Hallelujah. Neither should we. Hallelujah. Amen. Goodness is the nature and the character of God. When Moses saw the glory of God, he saw God's goodness. When you see that in Exodus chapter 33, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness. And I read this verse to you already. I will make all my goodness pass before thee. God is saying, I'm going to show you my nature. I'm going to show you that I'm God. I'm going to show you who I am. Hallelujah. And he said, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy this is what God was saying I'm going to show you my nature when I and not just in this revelation here but even as we walk away from this place amen I'll be speaking to you as we go on as you go through the wilderness I'm going to reveal myself to you that's why there were those amen who had to be punished that's why Moses had to be punished even himself why because God had to reveal who he was glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus so goodness God's goodness is connected to truth the fruit of goodness will always I said always always uphold the truth Ephesians 5 and verse 9 says the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth and listen, if you have, are you not writing these verses of scripture down? If you've been struggling with, amen, hallelujah, compromise, you've been struggling with telling people the truth because you, you know, you just, you think that you're just supposed to show them love and you just want to be kind. You want to be, you know, you want to show them mercy. You can show them mercy, but you got to show them the goodness of the Lord. It is the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. It is us understanding that God cannot lie. It is understanding that God cannot compromise with sin. It is us understanding, amen, that it is his goodness that is associated with his severity and his nature. He cannot deny himself in his nature. He cannot oppose what is holy because he is holy and he cannot allow sin to go unpunished. Hallelujah. Goodness will be, will, will, will preach the gospel even to those who don't want to hear. Amen. We see that in the scripture. You, you go back and you read 2 Timothy. Amen. And Paul told Timothy to preach the gospel. When in every season. 
Preach it all, at all times. Preach it at a funeral. Preach it at a wedding. Preach it at a birthday party. Preach it at a barbecue. Preach it when you go to the beach. Preach it when you go to the grocery store. Preach it whenever you go to the pharmacy to pick up your medicine. Preach it at the gas station. There is no such thing as an inconvenient time to preach the gospel because it is the goodness of God that will preach the gospel when people want to hear and when they don't want to hear. This is the life we are supposed to live. Hallelujah. Preaching to those who do not want to hear may appear to be unkind. It may appear to be, you know what I'm saying, inconvenient. You know what I'm saying? But when the Holy Spirit is in control, then this preaching that we are doing is in the best interest of those who are listening. So you cannot be afraid to preach the gospel. I didn't say invite them to church. I said preach the gospel. Hello. Because those are two different things. That's a whole nother lesson. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have to get finished with this because my time is getting away from me. Goodness is associated with knowledge to admonish. This means teaching by warning, admonishing or exhorting. That's what we're doing this morning. Hallelujah. Even as you go to work and you be around sinners all day, people who don't know God. Yes, you can show them kindness and gentleness. God wants you to show them kindness and gentleness, but do not. Amen. Hold back preaching the truth from to them. Do not hold back. Hallelujah. God dealt kindly with sinners. Amen. But he seemed like he, he, was, he was preaching harsh to, to those who were religious leaders. When you read that in Matthew 23. His gentleness is seen in his dealing with the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and the sinners. Because he knew they needed a savior. But his goodness is seen, amen, when he brought rebuke, even when he told, when he told a Samaritan woman that, you know what I'm saying, the husband that you have right now is not even yours. You don't have no husband because you're an adulteress. Even when he said, y'all don't even know what y'all worship. He was, he was, we might think, okay, that was shade. You know what I'm saying? No, Jesus had to tell the truth. Amen. And he dealt with the sinners. He dealt with the he dealt with the the those religious leaders. Even him rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees. That was because of his love. He cannot deny himself. Hallelujah! So you got to admonish. You have to exhort. Amen. It is a biblical principle for us as believers that we have to be ready and we got to be able to teach others. If you're not ready and you're not able to teach others, then you're not ready to be no preacher, no teacher. This is what you must be ready to do. The scripture tells us that. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 15. Amen. Verse 14. It says, I myself am also persuaded of you, my brethren, that you are all full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. Come on here. Goodness and righteousness. The fruit of goodness will always uphold righteousness. Goodness can never be unrighteous or inconsistent with holiness. You got to understand that. The Lord's goodness will always declare his righteousness. Goodness cannot let sin go unpunished. Whenever the Lord showed kindness, his goodness demanded repentance. And you see that in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. The Lord showed his kindness to Zacchaeus. Okay? But the Lord, but the result of the Lord's kindness was repentance and restitution. And you saw that with Zacchaeus. He dealt with that. Amen. Goodness goes right along with works. The fruit of goodness.